Step two, torque by sequence to 22 foot pounds. Pins the turbo motor and full time four wheel drive dual range. All right, I'm gonna pull this seal. I don't have a proper seal puller, but a fine flat tip screwdriver will do. You wanna get in under the lip of the seal, but you don't wanna ding up this crank snout, and you don't wanna ding up the aluminum around it. So what you wanna do is get a little underneath it there. Like so. You just kind of ride it on there a little bit. There it is. It'll pop out. There's our seal. What you're looking for is this area being not cracked, it's still pliable. And here, this lip. The seal's not horrible. But you always want to replace these any chance you get because they always leak. Especially if they're old. And Subaru's always leak, which you're going to have to deal with. But what you can see, our manufacturer is NOK. That's an OEM equivalent part. A lot of times with parts kits, you're going to get a uh, national seal out of Mexico or USA and a couple other ones. But the NOK, the Japanese made ones, are going to be the best, uh, best product for what this engine, the parameters for which it was designed. Today we have our Felpro oil pump camshaft front seal set. Let's get that part number. This is for 2.2, 90 through 96. And then uh, it's going to come with the crankshaft front seal, the oil pump to block mating seal, and then the O-ring. Let's open this guy up. And sometimes Felpro will fill the order with an OEM seal. But here, as you can see, we have a national seal out of Mexico. Then we have our O-ring for the inside of the oil pump. And then we have the oil pump mating seal. Like that. Don't ever use brake cleaner on this because you're going to kill any seals. You know, yeah, okay, we're replacing this seal, but look, it uh, dripped on something else you didn't want it to, and that's ruined. Especially for O-rings. So, what we want to do is take a little bit of oil, dip our finger in it. A couple, two splooks on there is about all it takes out of some oil. We want to put some on the inner lip of this seal. Then we want to do the same to the snout itself. Get a little bit of oil on there. Is this going to need oil in there anyway? Alright. Now we're going to place our seal. Kind of walk it on the place where you want it. Well, look, this is being good to me. I can push it in by hand. But what you do is you get a, a socket or a piece of pipe or a seal driver kit. Anything that's the basic, same radius. Circumference is the outer edge of it to drive it in. All right, I'm going to use, I don't have a socket deep enough to fit over that, so you could use a socket extension. You could use the back end of a socket. What's important is that you uh, get it to fit on there squarely and to not dent the face of the seal as much as you can. And you want it to fit flush with the outer face of the oil pump. If you do this regularly enough, it wouldn't be a bad idea to invest in a seal driver kit. All right, now our oil pump is seal or crankshaft seal is in place. But we're going a step further with this. We're actually going to rebuild our oil pump, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. All right, we have our bolts out. I'm just going to pop it off. I'm just going to wedge it off from underneath. And there is our oil pump. 
Here's our O-ring that we want to fix. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it's kind of sucked in a little bit. Yeah, I see that. I got kind of like uh, a little Pac-Man shape. This is why we want to replace this. Also with these screws, we want to tighten these up, make sure they don't back out. Uh, what has happened before is these have gotten loose. This oil pump housing loses pressure, and then the engine gets trashed. Was there a gasket on or is it, did it come off on that side? Uh, there was a gasket. Came off on that side. I like it would have been RTV'd on there, but then you got all this RTV spew inside of the pump housing. We gotta get all that crap out of there. This is what happens when you do that. If any of that squeezes off, it could be floating around in the oil stream and plug up any of the oil galleries. Well, it's probably just better to use the gasket that comes with it probably in a kit, you'd think, right? One way or the other. Oh, it depends on what you have sometimes. I'm curious, Sue, if this has been off of here before. You know, I wonder if this may have been rebuilt once before, because that front crank seal didn't look too horrible. But this guy, it looks like it's done for. Get that out of there. Get all this crap out of here. All right, I'm going to get this cleaned up real quick, and then we'll be ready to put it back on. We're going to put this together now. All right, this is the back side of our oil pump housing. Uh, we have these five screws here. Uh, it's a good idea to take these screws out, put some Loctite on them, and torque them back up. We've already done that. I think the last guy that worked on this thing had done that as well. So now we're ready to install our O-ring on the uh, engine block. And then we're gonna put our face gasket on. That's gonna fit right in there. Now for some of you that are a little fresh at the game here, let me show you a little trick. Slight little dukelet on there. Just a little, little nugget right on the corner of that guy. And that's going to hold our O-ring still for us. Put your O-ring in there. Touch an ultra gray to keep it in place. Okay, now we're ready to install our face gasket. We're going to orient this the way it goes. As you can see, our O-ring fits on first. And this is going to fit on second. Conveniently, there's little dowels on the block. We can line this too. Just push it right onto there. All right, there she is. We're going to install this dry. This gasket contains no pressure at all. This is just a, a face mounted gasket. All the pressure is within that other part I described to you earlier where we tightened up along that inner seal. And we're ready to put this on. It's going to fit right over the crank. Make sure my gasket's not folding in on itself. Alright, now she's on there. Stick my bolts back in. Alright, then we're going to torque this down to uh, 8.7 foot-pounds, give or take, 1.4 inch-pounds. Alright, I'm going to work around the front round part and then down towards the bottom in a radio pattern much like doing lug nuts on your tire. Start with this guy here. Work for the click. I'm getting much click here. I right. down by hand, maybe. See that? I don't know about that torque wrench because I remember I zeroed it out, but otherwise, quarter inch drive tool, finger tight, did an eighth of a turn, approximately. Yeah, we got some torque on that one. So it did actually click? There. Yeah, it did just click. Yeah, I think somebody might have had this part before and might have been a little unforgiving on these small bolts with some hillbilly torque. I'm trying to avoid that. 
but I want to make sure it's tight, dude. Well, what you want to make sure is it's not stripped out. This is the only one that really gave me a click. <laughs> 